shoulder, chin, shoulder, and double dream hands. Now, jazz hand, ah, right hand, rain hands. Point your hand over there. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network, Wednesday, March 11th. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, Tess Mellis. It's March when you hear those opening clips get real, real weird. <laughs> we got the bearded one, Trey Kirby. Hey-o! Hey-o! The international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friends. Mm, Lee and last but not least, making that magic happen, it is JD. Hello. There he is, and here we are. Guys, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at No Dunks Inc. You know we're on Facebook, at Facebook.com slash No Dunks Inc. Well, I guess it's official. We're now on Facebook. Email us your NBA questions and comments to nodunks at theathletic.com. We'll be stepping on that beach later today answering some of your great cues that you guys have sent in over the last week or so. And yesterday, just a reminder, we dropped a brand new episode of Who Wants Some Trivia. Trivia. There you go, JD. Um, I quizzed the Athletic's Big Waz on some All-Star Weekend trivia. This was a lot of fun. Have you had a chance to listen yet, Lee? No, to I this haven't. One? No. Okay, I just... great. I wanted to I wanted to test you on one okay. of them. Sort of a, a variation on a cue that I asked was. Okay. You guys, if you haven't listened, I mean play along here, help Lee Lee out. But can you name the four current NBA cities to have never hosted an NBA All Star weekend? Portland? Correct. Sacramento? Correct. Memphis? Correct. One more. Who else is out there that hasn't? We've had been an to this city. Star. We've been to this city, Oklahoma, Oklahoma city. city. Oklahoma yeah. yep. City, Portland, Sacramento, Memphis, and OKC. Nice. Mm. <laughs> you gonna listen to the podcast? I will, man. I will. Jesus, me, you know, it only came out yesterday, bro. I've <laughs> had like uh, 17 hours to listen to it, man. I'm a little offended, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, you're a little offended. Yes. All right, you come take care of my kids, and I'll go. And oh, listen you to the can't podcast. put a podcast on while you take care. No, of No, I kids? can't. I can't. Well, I can't. I can't listen to it then, because they're not. They're just like, oh, Dad, you're listening to podcasts. Fine. Well, why wouldn't you uh, bring the podcast to your kids? They'd be into it. I'd love <laughs> no, to hear Uncle Scooby. They would Skeetsy. not be into that. Oh, no, really? No. no. Oh, if right. it was talking about Scooby Doo, maybe they'd be into it. Do a yeah. podcast on that. You want me yeah, to do Scooby Doo? There is a dog trivia? in it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great call. Spoiler. What, breed? Uh, what did he say it was? Uh, Dachshund was involved, yeah. I heard. Yeah, it was a. Maybe a uh, a mix that ended in Dachshund. There, a it sounded small or something? though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the yeah. Jack, Jack Russell. Russell. I think it was. And then there was something in the middle, and then Dachshund. Jack mm. Russell, something Dachshund. It was small. Uh, yeah, it was a small, super barky dog. That's right. That's but, right. But that uh, has Crohn's disease. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, spoiler, we're ruining the episode. <laughs> Go listen to the uh, new edition of Who Wants Some Trivia with uh, Big Waz. He was a great sport. Um, and, and that's all we'll say. We won't tell you how we did. Okay. We, uh, we got some Is This News to play today. We will uh, do a little beach tease, dip our toes into the sand, and uh, get us in the mood for that beach stepping podcast that's dropping later on Wednesday. But we'll start with a little takeaways from last night. A lot of games on. We're not going to go through all of them, but the big one, the surprise one, I guess, Spencer Dinwiddie and the Nets upsetting the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, this was one of the later games. I'm not sure if you stayed up. You must have been tired after being a dad for so long <laughs> yesterday afternoon. But maybe you caught it this morning or you guys. Uh, what were your takeaways from the Nets? What's a bit of a surprising or shocking upset of the Lakers who had been dominating recently? My takeaway is don't gamble. <laughs> this is what happens in March. Okay. Teams just chill out at the top of the standings, relax a little bit. They're still playing against some of the best basketball players in the world. They're going to lose some games, and that's what happened. Some were calling LeBron James the best basketball player in the world a couple days ago. Now he loses to the Brooklyn Nets. Washed. Yeah. Washed. That's my takeaway. LeBron, not clutch. <laughs> Had an easy layup. Just blew it. Offensive fouls on that, too. He could have <laughs> oh, easily yeah. whistled him, but he knew – he knew time, score, and superstar situation. He wasn't going to get called. Blows a layup. And I think they just overlooked the Nets who are feeling good. And playing that's the important part about why you don't gamble in March is these guys have absolutely no pressure on them. They're just going out and playing basketball. I know this is a playoff team, but they still have no pressure on them right. whatsoever. And that's how they win. A lot of guys make money in March and April because they have no pressure on them. We talked about the Atlanta Hawks, how they are, are, are finding their way here in March. That's all I think you can take from this. But anybody else? It was got, a home game. You want to take something from it? It was a home game for Spencer Dinwiddie in front of his fans. Took the big shot, won the game. 
He looks so comfortable in the late game situations like that. He loves it. He yeah. loves the moment. That was good defense from Avery Bradley. But too. he shook him too. He did. Like yeah. and, and then well, knocked down the footer. shot calmly. Yeah. He uh you know, he he's he's one of those players we've talked about a lot, you know, you know, per, periphery of the all star team. But in clutch moments, I would love to have the ball in his hand. Well, enjoy it now because if he's still there with Katie and Kyrie, he's <laughs> never getting that shot. And that's the thing. Will he be there? He, he's, it, it's either him or Karras, I think, will have to make way yeah. because there's simply not enough ball to go around. And I think Dimwitty will be in demand. He's got a very manageable contract you know, for the current standard yep. of the NBA. And he's proven significantly a, a lot this season and even last season. He's capable in, that, in those last minutes. He doesn't freeze up. He's not going to hit every single one of them, but he gets to a spot where he feels he can knock down a shot. And last night... He did it perfectly. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, definitely shaking Bradley, as he said, and hitting the jumper with about you know 30 seconds to go. Uh, the Lakers had their chances. LeBron not oh. only um, you know having missing the layup inside after getting away with the offensive foul, that one rimming out, but then AD with the chance to win it at the buzzer, the three-pointer, a great look, open. He had just hit one like a Wide minute open. prior, and uh, you know the Clippers bench, they did their best to scream at him distract him on the sidelines and uh, just comes up short. But they had their chances. You think that's what it was? You think it was the scream from <laughs> there, behind? There was a nice, like, three or four guys screaming in unison. It can't just be one. It can't be one. Teamwork. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's, yeah, he missed it. And, and then I think, uh, I guess, uh, was it Chandler that was trying to scream at him? I mean, he was late to it anyway, but he goes flying into KD and into the bench. But they had their chances. After the two dominant, impressive wins – over the Bucks and the Clippers, it is one of those like bit of a trap game, mm-hmm. and the Nets, all the credit in the world, playing hard at least for Jacques Vaughn. Good uh, teachable moment if you got kids. You know, my older daughter is very much a perfectionist, so it's nice to be able to pull up a game and see one of the best, two of the best players in the world miss wide open shots that could have won the game or mm. tied the game. It even happens to the best, Isla. It's okay. You don't got to be perfect all the time. You just got to try your hardest. <laughs> And it is nice. interesting to see uh, Anthony Davis shoot threes at the end of games. I don't know the stats, but he has been a three-point shooter when it comes down to crunch time for the Lakers. Uh, it's LeBron is used to playing with those types of guys. That's who they tend to surround LeBron with in his winning situations. Anthony Davis is stepping out. Even he, you know, he he goes inside as well. But when it comes crunch time and they want to open the floor for LeBron, he has taken three-point shots and he usually makes them. Uh, he has he he seems to have that clutch gene as well. He's confident in that shot, and I think uh, everybody Frank Frank Vogel, Jason Kidd, whoever the coach is, that's not a good joke. Frank Vogel's the coach. Uh, everybody uh, is confident in him shooting. It was a good joke at the start of the season, but yeah, it's lame. not anymore. Really, it got Demarcus Cousins uh, released. Don't make that joke. Well, speaking of coaches, maybe another takeaway could be that even playoff teams need to fire their coaches to get that new coach bump sometime. 2-0 and in the Jock Vaughn era yeah. for the Brooklyn Nets. Of course, they did fire their coach after a 19-point victory. Mm-hmm. Also weird. Uh, but I don't know. You usually see a team respond after there's been a change up top. You just don't usually see it from a playoff team, but maybe this will be the new strategy. Wow. I'll we'll have to watch the Nets in the playoffs. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. What yeah. if they do win on out from here? Well, speaking of the playoffs, the Celtics clinched their playoff spot with a bit of a weird win over Indiana last night. Celtics blew a 19-point advantage. Pacers took the lead uh, late. Looked like they were going to pull this one out, but then the Celtics got the stops they needed. They got the scores. Marcus Smart, he hit a... Very difficult, like sort of leaning little left-handed bank shot over Sabonis in the paint uh, around the final minute to help give the Beantown boys the W. Tatum for, with 30 and Gordon Hayward a great game. Um, but the Celtics uh, almost let this one slip away. And, and I guess one of the takeaways is Oladipo looking like Oladipo of old in that one. I think easily his best game since coming yeah. back. Uh, hit some big shots uh, right at the end there. And the, yeah, the, the Pacers will be kicking themselves after this to, to have done all that hard work to get the lead late. And then to not be able to close it out, uh, it's got to be pretty frustrating. But you, you do have to take the positives out of it. And I think if, if Victor Oladipo is finally stuck, because he went into this game questionable, he wasn't even going to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes out there and he steps up and hits those big shots. That, he is their star player and that's what they need from him. So I think that's what you want to take out of this was the Pacers played badly at the start. And I thought, I, I mean, Sabonis had a good game of 28 points and Turner had a decent game with 16 points. But the Celtics aren't huge inside. And I thought that the Pacers could have tried to take a little bit more advantage of that because Sabonis is a big body. You know, he goes in there, he throws it around. And if you've got Turner in there as well, just put some more pressure on Tice. I didn't think they did that as well as they should have mm. in, from from uh, my vantage point. But uh, yeah, when it comes down to crunch time like that and Oladipo's feeling good, because he took a couple of, you know, 
kind of wild three pointers there. Yeah. But that's what stars do: hit, make or miss league. You know, knocks them in. It looks great. But of course, uh, the 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 one there at the end where they couldn't get well, he didn't even get that last shot. It was uh, holiday. Yeah, he was going almost. He was going to the wards the rim. Yeah, and it was yeah. holiday that had to force up something. It was good yeah. defense by the yeah. Celtics. Yeah, it was. Uh, the last couple of possessions to uh, to hold on to it. It's fun watching bouncy Oladipo. I think just from a uh, an aesthetic perspective, he he scores and he, he he always has that second little hop after the ball goes <laughs> through the hoop. Like yeah. he just looks different. Uh, than a lot of NBA players because he's always hopping out there. He, he's he's bouncy, and um, he felt it. Yeah, he felt it last night for the first time, it feels like, all season long, really. And he took that ill-advised three. I think it was about a, a minute 30 left. They're up three. The game's not over. You don't need to take a bomb. Yeah. Uh, but he was feeling so good uh, that he took it, and, hey, they lost. They lost against a very good team. Yeah, it's good to see him rounding into form. He's almost at 20 points per game in the month of March, shooting 45%. We're getting back to the standard Victor Oladipo, which is exactly what the Pacers need. Brogdon missing a little time. You got no Jeremy Lamb. It's nice to be able to slot in an all-star guard who's actually starting to round into form coming into the playoff time. And nobody's going to want to play this team. It'll depend on matchups if they're going to get out of the first round. But at the very least, they're going to give whoever they match up with a really nice series. Yeah. Again, Tatum sort of broke out of his little mini shooting slump that he had going. He had the 30, um, huge dunk late. Hayward, awesome in his home state with the 27, 10, and 5. Great game from him. Is anyone uh, a little concerned about Kemba Walker, though, in these last three games since coming back from the injury? This guy, I don't think he should be playing, personally. I, he's like, there's no explosiveness. He can't hit a shot. Um, I just think he's out there when he maybe shouldn't be. It seems like he's come back too early, and that is maybe a concern for the Celtics with obviously you know aspirations to go somewhat far in the playoffs here. And with the talent they have, if all four or five of their star guys are clicking on the same night or in the same series, they could go very deep. Kemba, though, right now, he does not have it. He yes. just looks like a shell of his former self to me. No, I agree. I, I agree. He doesn't look uh, too comfortable. He's not moving all that well. So I, I, I think the Celtics would be wise to at least consider sitting him down for a couple of games to get him right because he's so important to them come playoff time. And, you know, they, they can still catch the Raptors for second. But Yeah, but they don't. Yeah, the thing is they, they got the Heat still sort of trying to chase yeah. them down. You don't want to be fourth or fifth because then you're playing the Bucks in the second yeah, round. Yeah, true. But uh, you, you want to be healthy, though, most yeah. importantly. Yeah. So I, I think they've shown that they are a team that can – cover when other guys are out i mean jalen's been out and you know tatum's missed time kemba has missed time a lot of these players have been out of lineup and they uh they're able to have a next man up mentality so yeah they are i was trying to think can you remember and a lot of it it, it's not it's hasn't happened because of injuries because it does feel like one or two of their guys is always out i'm trying to remember a game this year where the celtics had like sort of full squad (laughs) where all of their guys played really well on the same night you know what i mean like the the Taco, yeah. Uh, with you see those shoes, by the way. The taco <laughs> taco J, yeah. Tatum. Hook me up. Goodness, yeah. You need those. I love playing in the thirty-four. I mean, I'll put them on my feet, uh, even if it says J. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you have Tatum, Brown, Hayward, Smart, um, and and then like even Akemba um, have like they all played well on the same night this season. I can't picture it. Yeah. I'm sure a Celtics fan out That's there, a question Beantown for the Beantown boy, boys, could tell me, um, but. Yeah, I can't remember, but I think he they is, have. I think they have. Yeah, it had to have been a game yeah. or two. But maybe. when those guys are starting, Gordon Hayward's coming off the bench, mm-hmm. and so there's definitely been games where the big three, you know, those yeah, yeah. the Kemba, Jalen, and Jason, have all played well. Yeah, yeah. Kemba shooting 28 percent in these three games that's coming back from the injury. Just to point that out or hammer that point home, 13 points per game. I'm rounding up here. 21 um, percent. I'm rounding up again from three on a lot of attempts. He just has no rise in his shot to me, has not getting to the rim and not finishing when he gets there. He just does not look healthy uh, 100%. I'm sure he's not. He, um, and maybe he was rushed back a little bit because of some of these injuries to the other guys, and they wanna, they were trying to catch the wraps for the second seed, trying to stay above the heat um, and out of that, that side of the bracket with the Bucks. But uh, hopefully he gets it going for the Beantown boys. They did cover, though. And they pick them <laughs> Just, We'll yeah. get to that a little Don't bit. Don't gamble, though. Later. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. But I will say, um, when you look sort of just uh, as a, a general, from a general standpoint, zoom out a little bit, it's okay for a guy not to be playing his best, you know, five weeks out from the playoffs, because that's when you want to be playing your best. It's, it's still a long time. We're still going to make great shows in the next five weeks. Right. But the, you kind of. You don't have to be concerned. If the guy's injured, yeah, he should sit. But then that's what they're doing with Jalen Brown. Yeah. Uh, and that that's probably a more worrisome injury, a hamstring injury. But I'm not too concerned about Kemba. All right. Well, to the Western Conference, um, keeping our eye on that eighth seed race, 
some little bit of movement there, at least last night. The Grizzlies lost a rough one at home to the Magic. Uh, they were up big. Orlando stormed back. Terrence Ross catching fire, cutting back door left and right uh, on the Grizzlies. Caught them sleeping a few times. So the Grizzlies lose. And on the same night, the Spurs beat the Dallas Mavericks, despite a monster game from Luka Doncic. And the Blazers beat the Suns. So, Grizzlies still in the eighth seed, but they're now three and a half games up on the Blazers, the Pelicans, and the Kings, and then the Spurs are four games back. So, uh, I mean, we're going to be doing this until, you know, the playoffs task mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. it comes to this eighth, uh, eighth seed race in the West of, like, who won, who's playing? Because we got a big one even on Thursday. Blazers face the Grizzlies. That's a huge, huge, huge game. It is, it is, uh, and this is going to be the real test for the Grizzlies. Can they sustain it? Can they hang on from here? Because three and a half games is not insurmountable, uh, and blowing one last night could really cost them. Uh, and I thought that, uh, I think Morant has been still good. We haven't had quite the same amount of highlights as we had earlier on, but that's great. I mean, he's still playing well, but it's just now it's going to be a test. And they're shorthanded, though, as well, the Grizzlies. So that makes it a little bit more and, and challenging. And good news, Jaron Jackson Jr. should be coming back here soon. Yep. And uh, Justice Winslow, I think, is uh, maybe He's, scheduled to be back soon. I believe that's right. Yeah. Um, still no Brennan Clark though. Uh, you know, they, you know, they, they miss him. They they need they need everybody healthy right now. But uh, Orlando, that you know, that's two impressive wins. They beat the Rockets in Houston. Now they come to come from behind and beat the Grizzlies. I mean, they're going to make the playoffs anyway. It doesn't yeah. doesn't really matter uh, for them. But uh, yeah, the Grizzlies. This is such a. It'll be such a disappointment for them if this season. Ends without playoffs, I think, yeah. considering just how close they've been. They've been in that eighth or that spot close enough for the majority of the season. So um, you sort of hope they get there and make the playoffs. At least I know it'd be great, obviously, Zion and, and Dame and all that. But I feel that the Grizzlies have earned that right to get into the playoffs. Yeah, it'll be a major bummer if like somehow they get eliminated on the very last day. If they've been in the playoffs for yeah. months at this point. But, you know, you're checking your project- projections, 538 and 835, seeing where they're going. <laughs> The Pelicans are still having a good chance, and I don't get it because, to me, I think the Grizzlies are going to get that spot. I think we got our eight teams in both conferences just because I don't think any of these teams, 9 through 12, whether it be Pelicans, Blazers, Kings, or Spurs, are going to string together enough wins to overtake the Grizzlies. Yeah, um, and and with that Grizzlies game, I mean, Tyus Jones had an open look at a three to tie the game up because Michael Carter-Williams goes for the foul on the floor. (laughs) Doesn't get the call and just stops. Milan's like, what? And uh, Tice couldn't knock it down. Yeah, you're right. The Pelicans have the easiest remaining schedule. It's a big part of that, those projections. They have two games against Atlanta. They have two games left against Washington. And they have the home and home against Memphis, which are, I mean, both of those are huge. That's the fun part here. There's a lot of games left between these, what, four, five teams uh, still jockeying yeah. for that. Uh, like I said, that Blazers-Grizzlies one on Thursday is 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 huge and and the Spurs are there too picking up that win last night against the Mavs the Mavericks have never swept the Spurs yeah. in a regular season series they were 3-0 heading into that one last night they well, led off to three they, periods they were, I think. they were yeah. leading that game and then the Spurs went on a ha- massive run they got Aldridge back and he scored 24 and but they had a contributions from everybody in that one and Porzingis picked a bad time to have maybe his worst game of uh, of the season he was brutal nine points uh four 15 shooting he struggled with the last two in shooting the ball. I saw him get outrun by Trey Lyles yeah. at one point. Yeah. I didn't think that that was something that would happen or something that could be possible. I mean, Porzingis isn't a fast guy, but he's got some long legs. Yeah. And Trey Lyles is not a, necessarily a speedster. It just looked like he wasn't even really trying. For though. sure. Yeah. Trey's looking it. spunky recently, though. Trey Lyles got a little bounce. He even blocked a shot last night. There you go. Doesn't happen too often with Trey Lyles. It's not his M.O. But the Grizzlies have, uh, yeah, they got a couple with the Blazers. They got a couple with the, that home and home with the Pels. Uh, it's a very tough schedule for them. It is very tough. They're going to have to grind it out big yeah. time. They need some of those sort of surprising wins, like the ones against the Lakers and yeah. stuff like that. Like, they dropped some they probably should have won, case in point, last night. But they got to still sprinkle in some of those, like, surprise victories. They're like, oh, wow, they beat a really good team. And maybe it's because they're playing a good team for who's resting a star player because they've got a seed locked up or, they, you know, they're a little banged up. You know, that's going to happen here, too, with a lot of these teams. It's like they just might get lucky on a given night because a star or two is just is resting. Yeah, yeah. And, and they hope that those other teams beat each other up a little bit because their schedule in, in the Grizzly schedules, Blazers, Jazz, Spurs, Thunder, Bucks, Pels, Pels, Celtics, Raps, Raps, Knicks, Mavericks, Trailblazers, Nuggets, Holy. <laughs> Thunder, Sixers, Rockets. It's hard. Wow. Did hard. you even say like a quote-unquote easy winner? There was a Knicks in there. there. That's Knicks. the one not playoff team, huh? Well, there's no 
under wow. them. No or, I mean, yeah. or beef and yeah, for it. Yeah. Teams, teams that are battling. My goodness. Yep. My it. goodness. Well, yeah, that's right. Those games where you play the teams behind you are the most important ones because yeah. that's a whole game right there that you'd be giving up if you uh, if you take the L. Can't wait. Continue to be fun. Like you said, t- uh, Trey, after the All-Star break, Grizzlies did their part. It was Gave perfect, us a little yeah. something here to, to get excited about. All right, let's get into Is This News. All right, our first headline. Probably one half of you out there don't want to hear about, but it is ESPN. <laughs> it's from Woj. Sources. NBA moles moving games to different cities due to the coronavirus. Is This News. This is weird news, really. I can't see how this would solve any problem. I mean, this virus is not, you know, confined by states. As far as I can see what we're hearing, it's going to be everywhere soon. I don't see how this would solve any problem for the NBA. I think this would just create more problems. And then logistically trying to find venues that would even be up to NBA standards, I think would be Mm -hmm. very, very difficult. So I I can't see this happening at all. And I, I think it's even bizarre though would even contemplate that right and they, and they are talking i think today with sort of ownership um you know C- commissioner silver and then i believe on thursday even with gms and stuff like that sort of goes down into the franchises themselves and having a representative there yeah i mean i'll read the part from woge's article here if the virus clusters um and forces a team out of its city and arena for a period of time there has been discussion about moving games to the away opponent's arena if that city hasn't suffered an outbreak or even moving games to neutral cities and sites and what you're saying is <laughs> that seems ass backwards maybe it's like well it's there's a virus here but let's still just take yeah you know hopefully Run healthy but it. still all this personnel and put it somewhere else and then yeah the possibility of it spreading even there it does seem strange they're gonna try and do everything possible to have fans in stands no matter where the fans are uh until it becomes a point where yeah. you have to play games with no fans in the stands which is probably what's going to happen within a week um so We'll see what happens. This doesn't make any sense, though. I mean, the, part, the smart yeah. move to do is to not have 20,000 people in the same spot yeah. inside. Uh, so until the league does that, everything is going to be a half measure. Yeah, this really isn't news. This is just sort of a, a preview of the fact that they're going to be meeting today on Wednesday here as we do this for the conference call. And then on Thursday, another meeting with the general managers and presidents of all the teams when they will discuss the real – long-term plans the real ways out of this because yeah putting a game in a city that hasn't had an outbreak yet that's it's number one cities don't have outbreaks yet because no one is being tested so there isn't a quote-unquote outbreak because tests aren't readily available which is nuts uh but yeah unless you want to go play in montana they're really if you really look at the map there's like i don't think there's a, a state that has one of the, the teams in it that hasn't had a, a case where I know a case is, uh, isn't quite an outbreak, but it's obviously happening. We do not know how many people are be, have been infected because no one's being tested. So that's how the situation is, is working right now. And the question is whether the NBA decides to go away from what the, the administration is doing and, and, and our government's administration is just not testing anybody and, and not um, adapting and putting into any sort of plans that would avoid an overflow and overwhelming the healthcare system. So does the NBA decide we're going to be the first league Mm. in North America to do what a lot of other sports leagues have done throughout the, uh, the world and say, okay, um, music festivals are being canceled. Right. Maybe we should postpone this two months. I think we all should be ready to be working in July and who the heck knows. I know that's, that's far fetched, but it's, it's probably a, a likely, uh, sort of solution a solution at this point just to delay everything for two months at the very least to get things under sort of uh, under wraps here if that happens if we get to that point where you're right let forget this whole neutral site thing and forget even um, we'll play games in front of nobody in the stands and let you're saying task the the most extreme and maybe the thing we have to do is to not even play the games and just take a two three month break whatever it is if that were to happen the NBA should really almost try and use this possibly to their advantage for the next season and try some of these things. If everything gets bumped back is my point where suddenly we're playing the finals in whatever August or September. And this, if that happens or if they just cancel the season completely, which I guess is in play too, then use it for next season to have a shortened season, to try out some of these things that you've been talking about. I mean, it would, it would legit work because of 
the unfortunate virus, but it would give you the opportunity for the next year to try some of these things you've been spitballing, right? Yeah, I mean, if Could. you're if you're playing the finals in September, it would make sense to start the next season, the standard two and a half, three months later, start it in December. Right. The Coonan plan, let's see if it works. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it would be an opportunity for sure. Yeah, yeah, either shortening the season yep. or, like you said, the Coonan plan, yeah, playing it into the summer, I guess, um, and avoiding football. I say that in air quotes because maybe football won't be happening too. This whole thing, though, moving to the neutral sites, I saw, you know, try to, to try to put a little smile on everybody's faces with this sort of pressing news. One of the Kamensky bros, I think it was Andy, uh, tweeted, this plan feels like when the Ghostbusters almost <laughs> shoot the cleaning woman with the power packs they're still figuring out how to use. Then Ackroyd suggests they split up, to which Bill Murray says, yeah, we can do more damage that way. <laughs> <laughs> Great tweet. Yep. Great tweet there from AK. I hope I didn't step on your tweet of the night. Ah, uh, uh, so. no, you're okay, fine. Okay, okay. All right, our next headline. From The Athletic, J.B. Bickerstaff agrees to multi-year contract with the Cavs. Is this news? It's quick news, yeah. Didn't think this was going to happen. J.B. Uh, just got the job, what, Last week, eleven games he's yeah. coached. Now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's five and six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've already decided that he's their man going forward. So congratulations to him. His dad Bernie is uh, an advisor to the Cavs, which probably doesn't hurt. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> like I'm loving this new coach. <laughs> yeah. You should see the way the guys are playing. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. The Cavs said that this was kind of the plan at the beginning, right? Like John Beeline was going to coach yeah. for five years and then hand it over to JB Bix. I guess they're just uh, jumping the boat and saying, eh. We're going to do it anyways. Let's do it now. Yeah. And I guess you know, I guess uh, it's good news for every other coach that doesn't have J.B. Bickerstaff on their Bickerstaff because that guy just likes to slide into the interim <laughs> role. So, <laughs> so now that he's got a job locked down, things are looking safer for the other 29. Yeah, that's right. They, they said when Beeline was hired, yeah, in five years we'll give it to J.B. Bickerstaff. But what they actually meant, it was a typo. It was 55 games or something yeah. like that. It was just uh, they screwed up there in the contract because mm-hmm. that's what he took over after 54 games. Beeline going 14 and 40 and – Bickerstaff does have this team playing better, harder, um, and winning some games. I'm sure as hell helps. I know they lost to Kobe White and your Bulls last night. Oh, yeah, they did. Um, but he does seem to have a, a good rapport maybe with the younger guys. Um, has a better handle on the locker room because Beeline had completely lost that and no one gave a crap what he was saying. I'm just shocked that um, Beeline had a five-year contract and J.B. Bickerstaff gets this season and then plus four. That's it just surprises me from the Cavs front office. I know they like paying coaches, multiple coaches at the same time, but uh, I didn't think I didn't see that coming. Didn't see that if it didn't see a long the, the whole thing with the Larry Drew scenario last year, how they didn't want to extend him, they gave him one year, and so I think Mr. JB Sir did very good. <laughs> Congrats to JB Bickerstaff. That was a uh, million dollar arm reference. After the uh, Julia Roberts reference, no one got. Million Dollar Arm reference, no one got. That's nope. totally fine. I'm a Disney man for life. That ball went right over my head. Which ball? I don't know. The Million Lonzo Dollar ball? Arm. Oh, the Million Dollar Arm ball. Baseball. Yeah, baseball. I like baseball, so too. So I just hit you back with one. You did. You did. I, you wait, know, I don't know. Wait, wait. I actually thought, correct me if I'm wrong, the movie you're referencing. Yeah. Is it a baseball movie? Yeah, but okay. it went over your head for sure. The thing is, I when I say... Well, but mine went over your head, no, too. I know, so now you know, it's two balls. You did. Oh, back-to-back jacks. <laughs> two, two and oh, two and oh. I'm going to step out. I'm going to get a... I'm going to get a... <laughs> Pitchers, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get time here. my pitch to hit here, 2-0. Oh. The thing is, when you said ball over your head, yeah. they didn't have batters <laughs> in the batter's box in that movie, really. it was re- The movie was really about going to India okay. and finding a potential oh. pitcher. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. I think so, I know what movie you're talking about now. Yeah. yeah, just like in Australia where they have those institutes. What are those institutes The called? Australian Institute of Sport. Yeah. They so what the do same they find? In cr- India. Uh, they find like a cricket player? Is that what they do? Yeah, they find good players who've played cricket and it's based on a true story a couple of guys oh. were signed from india and yeah. played in the u.s and had a minor league contract well think- apparently uh sachin tendulkar the uh, leading test cricket run scorer of all time the indian <laughs> <laughs> we can never do one it always has to be in tandem the fantastic indian cricket apparently he's ambidextrous when he throws he can throw just as well with both hands which is pretty remarkable yeah. skill isn't it there Why, is he a- hasn't shown it he hasn't no because he always shows it with his right but during practice and warm-up apparently he shows throw. it with his left, yeah. Oh, that sounds, oh, awesome. yeah, it sounds made up to me. <laughs> oh, I'm so good throwing left. Yeah. Yeah. You should see it. Do it in a game. <laughs> I'm one of the greats. Wasn't, like there, uh, well. wasn't there a pitcher that could pitch both arms? There but... is a switch pitcher, I believe, currently. But you're not allowed to do it 
You have to declare before the at bat starts. Yeah. Oh, right. so you can do it mid game though. You can't. You don't have to sort of follow it the whole game. I think that's true. I think I, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I think you can change batter to batter. Just not yeah. pitch to pitch. Right. Within right, the same right, batter. Right. Yeah. All By right. the way, Kill speaking of uh, speaking of cricket, <laughs> speaking of cricket, got a fun pun gun for Friday's show ready to go. Remember last week yeah. you said I got the cricket pun okay, gun. Good, so good. Been, uh, oh, right. Yeah. Been building it. It's going to be exciting. All right, excellent. I've seen some tweets sort of trickling. Ah, yeah, yeah. Emails. Yeah. Lots of emails. Lots of emails. I don't think Lee's done any work. No offense. No, I You'd be surprised. I've done. I've done pretty much <laughs> all of these ones. You'd be surprised. <laughs> so that's what you're doing, actually, last exactly, night. You're not yeah. playing with your kids. You're not not listening to our podcast. You're doing a bunch cricket of your puns. puns your cricket mm. puns. All right. Can't wait for Friday. Um, final headline. One more, guys. Bleacher Report. The Hawks hesitant to pay John Collins significant money in new contract. This one pulled from... Chris Kirshner's of the Athletics article talking to Collins, and uh, that was sort of sprinkled in that column. The idea of like, ooh, the Hawks, what are they, they going to pay a guy like John Collins, who's playing really, really well here since he came back from the suspension? Um, is this news, though? What do you think? What are you going to pay a 20 and 10 guy who shoots 60% from the four and 40% from threes? I think he's $10,000 million. Dollars. I think he's worth, uh, I, I think he's worth, especially his age, I think he's worth. Maybe not the max, but Ooh, close to that's it. That's what he's going to be wanting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, he's definitely I mean, going to Those be... stats you said sound like a max player. Yeah. I think he, the Hawks hope to sign him to a DeMontis Sabonis type contract, <laughs> you know, four for 87. <laughs> and four for seven? Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, 77. Yeah. Was yeah. Right. Seven, yeah. Oh, typo. Uh, yeah. Brain typo. And uh, yeah, he's going to want, you know, Jalen Brown, Pascal Siakam type right, money. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. We, we know he's going to want that. I and think, we know the Hawks are going to want to give him less money. What do you guys think, I think he's Sabonis, deserving? I think the Sabonis money is fair. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting when you compare him to Sabonis. Sabonis uh, made the leap this year to All-Star. Great player. And, well, I think he's getting a, I think the pace is getting a bargain, though, with that deal. So yeah. I think Collins is probably worth closer to 90 to 100 myself. Okay. I, I think uh, Collins is showing continually. I know he had the suspension earlier this season, but he is showing improvement and development in his game. And he's confident in shooting that three. He's only one and a half a game right now, but that's fine for a big man. He's versatile. His defense is is good. It's improved. Yeah, it can certainly get better. Yeah. Um, but he and Trey, I think, are building a nice little like, tandem there. Together, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's on pace to become the first player in NBA history to average 20 points per game on shooting splits of 55, 40, and 80. Um, and he's only one of five players in the NBA right now averaging 20 and 10. The others are Giannis, Jokic, Embiid, and Carl Anthony Towns. So... He's got the numbers, but then again, you step back and go, John Collins, max contract type of player? What position Man. is he, even? Because the Hawks have centers on their roster already. They've got $18 million next year for Clint Capella, $13 million for Dwayne Dedman. And Collins, he can obviously play next to a five. He's been doing it his entire career, but to me, he seems like a five. He is a role guy, and it's like, yeah, he has done a great job getting his three-pointer percentage up and you know he makes one and a half a game that's not scaring anybody and defensively he's not able to hang with stretch fours out there he's supposed to be a rim guy and he's not a great rim protector so I think it's tough to say exactly what you're getting in Collins you're getting a guy who can put numbers up offensively and how exactly far does that take you what else is he going to give you on the court uh so I can see why they're hesitant to give him a max for yeah. sure uh Sabonis seems to make more sense to me because he is a great pairing with Trey Young they're a great role duo together mm. but also that's exactly why you traded for Clint Capella. He's going to be your role guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it it will likely be somewhere in the middle, right? I mean, Sabonis, if he's on such a bargain deal, and I agree, for let's call it just 480 yeah. even, and then Pascal Siakam, what, 4130, um, you know, with the max. Yeah, you don't want to give Collins that, and he's probably going to warrant more than, especially being the Hawks, and look, you're not bringing in a ton of people, and you got to pay the guys to keep him. Um, and he's still young and obviously talented and can only get better, and I think he has that mindset to him too. I don't think he's – I don't feel like he'd be the type of guy you give him the money and John Collins just says, cool, great. You know, he's gotten I'm better every man. season. Yeah, 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 and I think he wants to continue to get better. Um, so somewhere in the middle, and I think you said like 100 or 110, yeah. I think that would be fine. Uh, totally fair. There is also the possibility the Hawks wait until the summer of 2021 to pay Collins, and you could let him enter restricted free agency and see what the market sets for him, too. Is always an option. A lot of it people is. think, actually, is the way they might go with this. Uh, it feels like it'd be smarter to try and sign him ASAP, because he's yes, he's getting better, but he also has only played half the season, and you're probably going to get him at a better value now, if he's willing to sign um, for lower than the max. We will see. Alright, we're going to dip our toes in the sand. 
But first, guys, the Black Tux believes every groom deserves a better experience when it comes to finding formal wear, a suit or tuxedo for their big day. Did you know the Black Tux was actually started by two guys who had one of the worst tuxedo fittings you can imagine? <laughs> Turns out they aren't alone in this frustration. Listen to these one-star reviews, all right, from competitor tux shops that shall not be named. Go elsewhere. This place is pretty terrible. All right, that one's straight to the point. Just garbage, this place. <laughs> Next one. We felt weird buying a suit from somebody so unhappy. We were afraid his bad vibes might follow us to our wedding day, so we left. Never want to be followed by bad vibes no, to your wedding day. Especially because you're usually putting a suit or a tuxedo like in one of those bags, and that's where they can trap the they vibes. Can tuck the vibes <laughs> in there. Yeah, you gotta check Terrible. the pockets. And this one, ugh. This tuxedo shop dressed me like a sleazy car salesman, and my wife just left me at the altar. And may <laughs> I interest you in a 96 Nissan Altima? <laughs> Okay, I made that last one up. <laughs> but what I love about the Black Tux is that they have an easy online ordering process that brings your suit or tuxedo straight to you. Just pick a style at theblacktux.com and request a free home try-on so you can feel the fit and quality before you commit. And if online isn't your style, the Black Tux has showrooms all over the country where you can find your sit, where you can find your fit, excuse me, and plan your look. From there, they'll ship your order two weeks before your wedding so you can check it one last time. Talk about commitment. Whether you're buying your outfit or looking to rent, you won't find a formal wear experience or designs like the ones you'll find at the Black Tux. You want your wedding to be remembered for the right reasons, order your suit or tuxedo at theblacktux.com and enjoy 10% off with the code DUNKS. That's theblacktux.com. Code DUNKS for 10% off your purchase. The Black Tux, formal wear for the moment. A little, little tagline there. I got a uh, text from a man, Rhino Sets, who's getting married this year, and he said, should I use the black tux for my hey, wedding? Hell yeah, you should. Tux text. 10% off. 10% Code off. dunks. I don't know. It's, it's for a friend of mine. I think I should be able to get him more than 10. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, We're black tux, you listening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give me the uh, the black deal, black tux. <laughs> give me give me twenty percent, huh? Yeah. Hey, is he an extra uh, a few bucks? Is huh? he looking uh, Rhino looking just for himself or the the whole party? Well, I don't know about that. Mm. I haven't got those deets. Okay, so we get twenty percent for sure if we get them. Yeah, that's get them all that's what I was suited asking. and booted. That's what I was asking. Nice. All right, uh, let's hit the beach. Let's get in the mood here, because we will be beach stepping later today, Wednesday, full on mailbag only podcast. And to start us off on the beach, we asked yesterday on the show, which surface is better to walk barefoot on, the beach or the grass? The votes are in now. 56% for the beach. Oh, it uh, evened out a little bit. Evened out a little bit. People were fired up about this question. Yeah, I, sure. You know, the, the comments to it um, about the pros and cons to, yeah. to both. They pointed out a lot of things we were talking about on the podcast, but well, there were some new ones too. And I like the passion of uh, whether you would step on the <laughs> beach or the grass. What? No, no, we asked the hard-hitting questions yeah. here. Yeah, I'm the beach man. Yeah, you got shorts on today. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's warm. I'll give you that. It's going to be beautiful. I woke up today, yeah. opened a window. I said, Lee else is wearing shorts today. <laughs> and Tass might be wearing grass slides. <laughs> you can wear shorts on grass, though. That's that's an option. That's true. That's very Just true. Throwing that out there. Yeah. If you're feeling crazy. How about pants at the beach? Yeah, that's a bad that's a bad mistake. I, I <laughs> uh, yeah. You I, see something like, uh, I don't know, like you'll be looking through a, a store online and they'll offer something called a beach pant. Yeah, I'm. I'm like the pants look cool. They look very comfortable, but I'm. I don't know that I've ever worn pants to the beach. Not on a cold day. I mean, I was gonna say. <laughs> I mean, night. how often am I at the beach on a yeah, cold day? I've never yeah. lived at the beach. Yeah. And even then, I want to feel that uh, sea spray. Yeah. Well, you sometimes I'm go down calves. to Florida with your family and friends, like, and rent a beach house. At night, do you ever wander down to the beach and okay, you put on some be beach pants? It gets chilly down in the water. Maybe that's why this uh, changed overnight. All the grass people came out and they started to get their votes in. <laughs> but the beach people, they were at the beach. Maybe. Okay, here, out of their pants. Here's a cue. Would you rather play spike ball on the beach or spike ball on grass? I've never played on the beach. Ooh, it's fun. A beach, 100%. It's fun. Easy, I like the easier idea of to diving. dive, yeah. Easier to dive, yeah. Less worried. Tough about. to move around, though, uh, in that yeah, sand. Yeah. You got to go chase the ball. Yeah, it's not a sport, yeah. Move a ton in. No, no, you're right. You're right. Lee, have you played spike ball yet? I don't think so. Okay. No. We're doing it this summer. No. Beach cricket? Grass cricket? Which one's better? Oh, beach. Beach. Way more fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
We talked about this once, right? Okay. Yeah. Hit it into the water. What is yeah. uh, a four? Z well, it can be a four. It depends on the rules of the game. It could be just like the to make the bowler and the fielding team actually work. You say you can just keep running until they retrieve the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so, rack up the points. And that's the thing. When you're playing and you get hot and sweaty, then you just go run in the water. It's great. Can't do that when you're on the grass. That is nice. Yeah. That's a nice spot. Spike it's ball impossible. too. Yeah. Sprinklers on the grass. Just throwing it out there. But then it's slippery. <laughs> Well, you have enough grass that you you don't play on the slippery area. How about beach baseball versus sand, grass baseball? I'm kidding. Right. We're not talking. Okay, about here's baseball. a question. Here's a question from a uh, from a gentleman we actually know here in Atlanta. Howdy, donkeys. We're all subjects during the reign of King James, the current king of the NBA. Long live the king. If you could be king of something, what would it be? And once you became king, what would your first royal decree be? For example. I would claim the title of King of the Chicken Fingers, and my first decree would be that anywhere chicken fingers are served, Zaxby's Zax sauce must be available. <laughs> Kindest regards. That's from Jared here in Atlanta, our buddy Jared. King I thought of the you chicken were the chicken fingers, fingers man. Yeah, bullshit, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> I am the king of the chicken fingers, and he knows that. Oh. I was just at him at an Atlanta United game. Who was the only one that got the chicken fingers at that game? <laughs> This oh, guy. you dethroned him. Hell yeah, I did. Oh, I man. slayed him. Wow. Did you crown yourself afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I don't biased. know what he's talking about. You're not a king of the chicken what fingers anymore. What are you talking anymore. about? I haven't seen you eat a chicken finger and in... You don't come out anymore, man. Oh, that's true, but... You're, you're at home with your grass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing on it. Frolicking. Grass between my toes. Would you uh, rather eat a chicken finger on the beach or a grass? Hmm. I think grass. <laughs> oh, I don't like eating on the beach, period. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Can't drop Very it on dangerous. the beach. Yeah, yeah. Gross. Um, but uh, Zaxby's Zach sauce, you know what that is? Lee? No, I don't. You ever been to Zaxby's? No. Um, obviously, a, a chicken place here down in the south. I think it is only sort of targeted. Strictly okay. chicken. Uh, is it nation? I mean, is it country <laughs> countrywide? <laughs> what am I trying to say? Is it everywhere in Nationwide is on your side? I I don't don't think think so. so. I think it's more of a southern delicacy. Anyway, Zaxby, Zax sauce. It's basically mayonnaise, ketchup, uh, probably pepper, garlic, Mm. uh, Worcester sauce or something like that. It's got to be what it is. Anyway, that's what it's got to be. I'll I'll, I'll take your word for it. I mean, we're, 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 you know, what are we talking like? Well, you're not king of chicken fingers. I know that. You're not queen. You're not even prince. No, no, no. Are we talking like, you know, a pop, is it better than Popeye's? Is Zaxby's? It's different. Um, I like Popeye's. I don't mind Zach. I love chicken fingers. I'm the king. (laughs) What about Chick-fil-A then? Isn't Chick-fil-A the big, uh, down here? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. More a nugget than a finger. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And more of a sandwich even. Right. Well, when I, I got that's it. the most famous, of course. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what are you kings of? You have an answer? What are you the king of? Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny because I said I was going to be the king of pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, my decree is once, once you I see... was the king of pants. <laughs> <laughs> once you look in that's your weather app cut. and you see uh, 19 degrees Celsius, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you must wear shorts. I'm sorry, you're not the king of shorts. I know the king of shorts. It's JD's buddy that lives up in Toronto. Uh, yeah. Scott. Scott McCrory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy wears shorts year round. Yeah, he, so he, he once got pulled over on his bike in a snowstorm wearing <laughs> shorts because wow. they, th- Bow they down, thought man. He, was, uh, they, he was crazy or yeah. drunk or both. Wow. Yeah. Nope, just love does shorts. He, does he have this thing where he's got like no pain receptors in his legs? Is that <laughs> is that even a real thing? Because <laughs> I hear people thing. that wear shorts all the time know. say that. He runs hot, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he, that's the same guy who supports the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and wouldn't wear pants <laughs> until the Blue Bombers <laughs> won the Grey Cup up in the mm, CFL. Yeah. That's Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, it's not always shorts weather, so, you know. That's but that's, the point is, it is always shorts weather yeah, to these that, guys, no, I think to the real kings. I think he's being disrespectful to the short. You've got you to gotta understand, when it's too cold and it's crazy, put on pants. Shorts are for <laughs> shorts weather, and today is wow. shorts weather. <laughs> All right. Kings wear pants sometimes. So that would be your decree by the sound of it. Yeah, with 19 degrees Celsius, about 70 Fahrenheit, you must wear shorts. Otherwise, you get arrested like this dude. <laughs> 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 All right. That's hot. You can... You can Go down to yeah, like I'm, six. No, listen, listen, I'm about a 16 to 17, but I'm just saying I'm going to give everyone else a couple of degrees, you know, leeway here. See, if you're a king, you wear a robe. And I think that 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 traps some heat so you can wear a short underneath there as well in colder temperatures. That's what I think as the my, king my, I mean, I don't wear shorts year rounds. I'm not a crazy person, but my legs don't really get cold at all. Humble brag. Yeah. 
Yeah, but see, I've seen you and, and especially Tass, like in Summer League at Vegas, sometimes wear pants when it's like, you know, 148 degrees. Oh, yeah. Isn't Those that... are indoors, though. No, nah, but... Yeah, that's not... freezing in there. <laughs> no, but it's not freezing in It there. is. It's air conditioned. It's not freezing. But we're in and out. We're in and out a bit. It's like, come on, man. Put on shorts. It makes me I hot. I love shorts. Yeah, not always. I've seen you in a pair of pants. <laughs> Look, Tass wears the most pants. There's yeah, no doubt does. about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's my European roots. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I will say, uh, Egypt, I was in Egypt in August. You should have seen how many men were wearing pants there. It was like 48 degrees yeah. Celsius. I'm like, come on, guys. What's going on? Surely you're feeling this. You know, even if you're born and raised in that heat, you'll be used to it. But it's like, it's still hot, you know? Admit your legs are hot. Yeah. Come on, man. Are you, are you the king of anything? I literally had written down that I'm the king of pants. Wow. <laughs> this is wild. Only because I want to make a decree. Every pair of pants, every waistband, this could honestly, maybe I'll just be the king of waistbands. Okay. You have to have at least two belt loops on the back of your pants. I don't hit, like it when there's just one in the center, then you get like the hangy belt. Yeah, I hate that. I agree. So two to three, if you got two, right over on top of your hip points. If you got three, throw that other one in the middle. It's perfect. Three's almost, three, three I always miss one yeah. when I'm putting on my belt. <laughs> I like two, but well, I hear I what you're saying. That's why I'm the king of the waistbands. Yeah. I've never missed a loop. Yeah. And as you guys know, I am still the reigning king of the weenie critters. <laughs> Nobody's taking the crown. 20-year <laughs> reign, are you kidding me? Actually, probably a 30-year reign at this point. <laughs> I forgot about that. You want to explain that to new listeners? What, what, uh, what the hell that means? Uh, back in the day for school lunches at um, elementary school, <laughs> uh, one of the options uh, at Plano Middle School the weenie critter right it's just like a tiny corn dog which have then became a song a jump on the bed song who's the king of the weenie critters i'm the king of the weenie critters and you still have the title <laughs> <laughs> and i still got the crowd all right no decrees um on tomorrow's show i'm doing the top five deep cuts from today's episode <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> weenie critters king of the pants boxy frufus was <laughs> referenced <laughs> scott uh, mccrory <laughs> Are you uh, a king of anything? Well, you just reminded me. I had nothing written down, Trey, but I am uh, king of the thick belts. <laughs> oh, my don't, God. Wow, what don't, a theme today. Don't <laughs> like a, a belt that doesn't hold up your pants. Well, yeah. Because, well, <laughs> yeah. but some people... <laughs> like a weightlifting belt? <laughs> like a piece no. of string? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, an actual thin fashion belt yeah like a you know any sort of rope is some that, some that, skinny people is that a thin or a thick belt? that's border that's, that's, that's thicker than thinner yeah it's medium i'd say but <laughs> see people like yourself you don't need a belt uh, i think no, you can yes. get by without a belt yeah i could people I could. who are extremely skinny can wear a thin sort of material belt like a uh, a meshy belt like a fabric belt wouldn't a, thin a belt person, that doesn't have integrity. Yeah, wouldn't a thin person need the belt? Yeah, though your pants would just yeah. slide off. Yeah. It's all about the pants. I guess it's all about pants the pants right here, baby. <laughs> I guess it is all about the pants. So you like a fat belt, though? A yeah, I like belt. A, I like a belt. <laughs> you like to fill the loops. <laughs> I like to fill the loops. Uh, JD, boy. are you the king of anything pants or shorts related? Yeah, I guess I'm the king of the cargo pants. <laughs> <laughs> and I would decree that everybody has to wear cargo pants on Fridays. Cargo pants Fridays. Hashtag cargo pants Fridays. All right. Minimum of how many pockets? Uh, you know, well, I mean, you got your normal, so one, two, three, four, like front, yeah. back pockets, and then the. Then six, so six, six minimum six pockets. All right, yeah. King of the cargo pants. Yeah, but Are painters' pants allowed, or you know, like a carpenter's pants? No, come on. Oh, come <laughs> I don't have any man. cargos. Well, you got to get some. All right, I got a couple of days. Do they have to be that classic, like beach color? No, no. It can be any color. Okay. I, I even like uh, army pants. You know, the oh camo yeah, right, 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 right. With, uh, yeah. Okay. Just somewhere to put your grenades and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Carry them around. Easy access. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for the email, Jared. <laughs> You fake king of the chicken fingers, you. <laughs> Get out of here with that. Uh, all right, Lee, tweet of the night. Mm, tweet of the night. Wow. Twitter. <laughs> wow. What do you got, got uh, it's, a, it's, it's a one plus one tweet. It's one plus the bonus for an extra tweet here. Uh, it comes in from uh, Arizona Sports, 98.7 out in there in uh, Phoenix. Uh, former hashtag Suns forward Charles Barkley is selling the MVP trophy he won in Phoenix. But he's doing it for a noble cause. He's raising money to afford. Uh, to, 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 he's selling it to raise money to uh, build affordable housing in his hometown mm-hmm. in Alabama. And uh, that's one tweet. And then the second tweet comes from Espo, friend of the show out in Phoenix, used to work for the Suns, who tweeted, uh, retweeted that with the Phoenix Suns should buy 
the Barkley 1993 MVP trophy for overvalue to show a franchise legend true support and use it as the foundation of a son's museum in the renovated arena. Okay. I, think it's, I think it's a great idea. I think that's a really, really good idea because uh, Charles went to the Suns, immediately had success, got into the finals, won the MVP trophy, and uh, I think that would be great to put on display out there in Phoenix. I think that's probably the best cause for it. So I wonder what it goes for. What do you, what do you think an MVP trophy sells for? I mean, it's an auction. I don't know. Yeah. It's... I mean, a million bucks? No. No, 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 no. My first thought was $40,000. Yeah. I, I, don't, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That would be my opening bid. But for, for what he's trying to raise money for, yeah, true. that's going to increase the price, I think, especially if it's an organization, you know, who's got pockets of money. They've got a, a you know, very, very, very wealthy owner. Who well, they haven't afford. confirmed they're doing this. This is SPC no, they haven't. They haven't. Yeah. But, but this I think would be great for Phoenix. Yeah, no. to do that. Uh, you know, to, it's a piece. It's a piece of their history. So I think it, that's where it best belongs. But I think at Jared Wade is right when he <laughs> tweeted that James Harden is definitely going to outbid everyone. <laughs> great tweet. Great very, tweet. very good tweet. Very yeah. tweet. And he should. That would be so, <laughs> so funny. If you bought Charles Barkley's MVP, could you then say I'm a two-time MVP because you have two MVP trophies? <laughs> Yeah, you're like it's like uh, you're the million dollar man. You're Ted DiBiase. You're just buying it. Everybody has a price. Nice. Yeah, maybe Draymond Green will buy it. Yeah. Woo. Ooh, yeah. What a spicy comeback from Chuck there on Dan Patrick's <laughs> show. Uh, sort of saying he's a uh, well, he didn't want to say he was the Joey Fatone. That's right. Dan Patrick lobbed a grenade at Joey Fatone, and Barkley just threw his body in yeah, front of us. Yeah, he said like, not Joey. Not. Not around me. I'm friends with Joey Fatone. Right. But saying <laughs> Draymond was the worst guy in the boy band. Yeah. That, that thinks everybody's coming to see him, but they're coming to see Timberlake. They ain't coming to see you. So who is That's the worst guy in the Backstreet Boys? Or, Howie. Uh, sorry, in um, Howie. So I'm, I'm mixing them up. Chris Kirkpatrick. Chris Insane. Kirkpatrick. Right. Insane. Right, 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 right. Yeah, we've done this before, yeah, too, for sure. You know, Chris, had it, he had it tough. He had he was a good solo singer on the first record. The second record, they made him cut his hair, and it was all over. Yeah. Well, was it, I think it was Chris Kirkpatrick had me wearing goggles on top of my head uh, oh, yeah. for one s- semester of high school or like Ski whatever. goggles. What wow. a cool accessory. Yeah, I did. Really? Well, I, I wore them for a weekend for sure. Like, I remember <laughs> having them. <laughs> so they were acquired and worn at least once or twice. And then people were like, what are you doing? I don't know. Uh, the John Kirkpatrick show. Or, I'm sorry, the Don Dan, Dan, <laughs> Dan Kirkpatrick, they need to do a Photoshop of Chris Kirkpatrick on Dan Patrick's head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, how, yeah. What are they What are they waiting for? We can send them some ski goggles uh, that Skeets has in his closet. Yeah, I wonder where those are. J Skeets. No, you don't have them because every year we talk about... <laughs> those ski goggles? Well, we talk about having a celebration uh, like a... Uh, like NBA teams, you know, and, oh, and all yeah. major sports teams now put on the goggles when they pop the champagne and, and the beer skis just, just so it doesn't get in the eyes. Yeah, I yeah. don't have them. You're right. They yeah. might might be in a box in Stratford, but I highly, highly <laughs> doubt it. Forget them out, man. I think Chris Kirkpatrick's career peaked when he got called out in uh, Eminem's song, Without Me. I didn't hear it. I didn't know who he was until that. <laughs> put it on the map. Yeah. Uh, I, don't know, I mean, man. it's a pretty big shout out. It's a huge song. It pro- you know? Yeah. Probably he probably peaked when they had twenty thousand people selling out for show yeah, after but, but show after show. They weren't looking for him though. Show. That's what I'm saying. Like he, they weren't there for him. Yeah. Oh man. All right. I feel like Charles Barkley here. You're trashing Chris Kirkpatrick a little bit too much here. Listen to his vocal work on the first and sync record. <laughs> what was his? Big they song? thought he was going to be the second lead singer. Yeah. And then everybody's like, "No, let the cute guy sing." Yeah. Just wait, 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 wait. But like, Joey Fatone was in. Backstreet Boys. NSYNC. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, he's the third best NSYNC guy. Joey Fatone, he's played in the celebrity yeah. game, I think. Yeah, 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 yes. Okay, just list them. List the NSYNC guys. in my big, big, big JC, yeah. Justin, Chris, Lance Bass. Oh, Lance Bass. And Joey Fatone. And Joey Fatone. Okay, okay. You so, think- Barkley's reference was spot on. He's right. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. You think you can go one name with JC with Skeets? You can just say JC? Chazez? <laughs> Chazez, whatever his name is? Yeah. I know who you're talking. You about. Thought, yeah, yeah, I do. I so, do. so they thought he was going to be the lead singer because you said let the cute guy sing. I thought you were playing. I, I, I mean, they had they basically had three leads for the first record, and then you know, Justin was a superstar. Yeah. They just mm-hmm. had to let him take all the parts for the high voice. Right, right. Same with Robbie Williams and take that. Totally. Yeah. Gary yeah, Barlow just, was the singer, and but Robbie was like, I'm way better than these guys, and he was. <laughs> you just found out Robbie Williams is performing in Vegas. Yeah, I said during did. summer league. Oh, we are going. For sure. Well, we don't know we're going anywhere right yeah, now. Well, let's just go finals. to watch Robbie anyway. <laughs> it's worth it. Three nights. You're going to go all three nights? Yeah. 
I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> funny thing is, though, the funny thing is, like, obviously excited, I'm definitely going to go, but it's a bit like Vince Carter in the dunk contest in 2000. I mean, Ooh. you know, when I saw him live, 125,000 people. Like, it's. I'm going to tell you right now, man. It's not going to be as good. No, I know, I know, I know. You know oh, so was... you're sort of like uh, Rachel Nichols trying to get Vince Carter back in the dunk contest. This is you, you know, oh, yeah, Robbie's still got it. He's still got his fastball. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Nebworth was such a great memory. It's like, I hope he doesn't spoil that memory, you know? I mean, he won't. So, but he I've could. Also, but I've also got huge expectations for it. I know? don't think you should go. I don't think you should go. I think it's a bad idea. Years later, you know? So you're either going to go... <laughs> Not at all, or back to back to back <laughs> nights, three nights in a row. No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going. I'm definitely going. Okay. So you go the first night, and if it, he kills it, then you'll just get tickets for the next two nights. Yeah, use that game time app. Yeah, <laughs> but maybe uh, dress up, get a black tux. Look <laughs> oh, in Vegas? No thanks. I'm wearing shorts. Draymond <laughs> <laughs> Green wore a suit with shorts. Yeah. It all comes together. Oh, these March podcasts are going to be something else here, people. Pick them results from last night. Celtics Pacers. Celtics were favored by two and a half. Uh, as we talked about, we're up huge. Gave it all away. Then we're down, but eked it out. A couple free throws late. Got the cover. They won by three. Uh, so they, they got the win. Everybody was back in the Beantown Boys yesterday. Everybody had their Chiefs hats on, and we all got the victory. So Trace 4-2, and two, everybody else is 3-3. Three and three. What's tonight's game? A big one in that race for the eighth seed in the West. The Pelicans visit the Sacramento Kings. They're both tied with the exact same record at 28-36, and 36, three and a half back of the Grizzlies. So Pels Kings, wow, it's a biggie. It's man. a second a one on ESPN tonight and it's a small spread kings getting plus one and a half at okay. home home dogs uh, eh? wow that is very very difficult i'm going pelicans yeah i i agree i'm gonna go with the pelicans here kings struggle at home against the spread uh, did play that's well right, the buddy. Raps, yeah. they played, the that's the thing they played well against the raps i mean they they got a lot to play for too but i'm gonna go kings I don't know, Kings. They're, they, of the two teams, they've been playing better, I would say, over the last 10 games or so. So, uh, give me Sacramento. You know I love me some De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, I'll take Sacramento Whoa, as well. Oh, here we go. Kings, plus one and a half for Tass and I. Trey and Lee like the Pelicans on the road to win by two or more. Good luck to everybody out there. Guys, thanks for joining us. Go check out that uh, new trivia podcast, Who Wants Some Trivia with Big Waz. A lot of fun. All-Star Weekend Trivia. Dropped it yesterday. And later today... Man, if you thought this one was crazy, I'm sure today's beach stepping will be just as wild. I'm going to cut my pants into shorts. <laughs> like I'm Ken Angelis at a wedding. He did that once. Really? Yeah. He, he was too hot. He was, wearing, he was wearing pants at a wedding. Too hot. The, the, the reception, I mean, we were at the reception and everything, the dance party starting. He said, if somebody finds me scissors, I'm taking these pants and we're making them into shorts. And we found scissors and we did it. Hmm, yeah. Interesting. Also, right. also, I would have guessed it's because I wasn't at that wedding. I would have yeah. guessed because his pants were too tight on his calves because he's got monstrous he's got calves. Monster, monster huge calves. Huge calves. Huge, huge. Some of my biggest I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 Guys, we will uh, see you later with the Beach Stepping Podcast. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, calves. Brace the day, people. You could stay.